This podcast is brought to you by People's Light, a cultural and civic center with theater at its core, celebrating its 49th season. For more information, visit peopleslight.org. Cratchit's Table, a Christmas Carol podcast. This is a limited series roundtable discussion with the cast and creative team of Christmas Carol, running at People's Light from November 15th to December 31st. You can get your tickets on the People's Light website. Infused with original music and traditional English carols, and performed by a stellar ensemble, this jubilant retelling of the beloved Yuletide ghost story is the perfect way to celebrate the holidays. Bring your loved ones aged 6 to 106. On this podcast, we're going to dig into everything that is Christmas Carol, from why we tell this story over and over to its potential to be quite problematic. We'll be joined by a variety of guests and perspectives. I'm your host, Andrew Watring, People's Lights Community Programs Creative Director and the Associate Director of Christmas Carol. Throughout the episodes, I'll always be joined by People's Light's producing artistic director and the adapter and composer of Christmas Carol, Zach Berkman. How you doing, Zach? I'm great, Andrew. How are you? Great. Today, for our future-themed episode, we have two guests. Woo-hoo! Uh, very special. Um, we have Gabe Moses and Sydney Banks. How are y'all doing? Woo! Doing good. Doing, doing good. good. Yeah. Feeling and great. This is not actually your first intersection with People's Light. You were also involved with our touring production of Illuminating by Rustin. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Mm-hmm. Me? Gay? Yeah, oh my why gosh. not? <laughs> so, yes, introduction into People's Light first came from By It Rustin. Actually, that's when Andrew and I first met. That is where we met. Um, back in June, we did it for the Juneteenth event holiday. And I think it was just for like a week's time combination of like rehearsal and performances for the Juneteenth weekend. Then I was asked to come back and do it again for this tour through what was that like the end of September yeah through into October meeting Gabe and it was definitely a longer experience so I think we got to like dive in a little bit more about like Bayard his history who he was and just fleshing out a little bit more of like his story which was great and getting to put it in front of students which was a different group of people than we did for Juneteenth. And just seeing how that flowed with what we were giving and how they responded and information we could gain from the kids hearing this information, especially like we went to a lot of schools in Westchester, so primarily like where Rustin is from. And Gabe, you had a previous touch point with Rustin and then right. came to the, you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah, so I worked on the original production that the Illuminating Buyer Rustin show is based on that Steve H. Bronnax the third wrote. It it's called By Rustin uh, Inside Ash that People's Light did in 2022. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I was the assistant director on that. So it was nice to come back and do this version as the actor and to play By Rustin and kind of have that um, knowledge from the previous production as well. And also to bring it to students, and we talked about this, Sydney and I, that we didn't learn about By Rustin in school at all. Like it was always mm-hmm. the bigger names like. MLK and, and Malcolm X. So it was nice to like introduce this person, this human being to these students and say, you know, people who are queer, people who cast all these shadows on them still did a lot for our country. And so it was really nice to see them, like the light bulbs go off in them to see that this was a real person. And I think the film, right, the Rustin film that Coleman Domingo, who a lot of our audiences know about from Lights mm-hmm. Out and Dot and other kinds of things, Coleman's playing Rustin in the film, yeah. which comes out now, right? I it's like it's playing, for playing that. right now. Yes. So we'll put a plug in there for you, Coleman. <laughs> but yeah, so it's, it's all full circle. Well, thank you both. And I will go to our question that we ask all of our guests. And I, I think we'll start with you, Gabe. What is your relationship to Christmas Carol? So mine is really new. A lot of people grew up with Christmas Carol. But I feel like I found it more as an adult through college and, you know, just doing it and, and being introduced to it there. And I guess for me, it was, I so I grew up on the Home Alones. Absolutely. I grew up on the Elves. Like, the, that was my kind of, like, Christmas tradition. So for me, it was always, like, finding a way to, like, relate to the story. And I guess personally, I never found a connection to it because it was always this grumpy old white man <laughs> who was like, why, 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 why are we feeling for this person? And so I guess recently, I, when I am more educated now and in the 
theater. <laughs> so, and it looks like appreciate what yeah. that means. And I also appreciate. There's the so many grumpy white men. There's right so many. <laughs> why are telling this story? A lot to go around. No, but it's interesting because like this story. Now that I have experience with it and have done it a few times, it's saying that this is why people hold, hold grudges. Like it starts from grief. It starts when you're a child. It starts when you're young, and it carries through. So the, these are all the reasons why people are like this in the world. Yeah, can, can you talk about that a little, like your preconceived notions of Christmas Carol, how you understood the story, or maybe versions that you've seen in the past, how that is different or, or similar to the version that, that Zach uh, put in front of us in the room? I guess I just never saw myself in, in the story. It was always, even with, with the spirits who aren't real, they were always these stereotypical versions of what ghosts, quote unquote, are. And mm-hmm. so with this version, it's saying that women can be, can be ghosts, queer people can be ghosts, and spirits because they aren't real. <laughs> and so just like setting up a world where so many things can happen, you know, <laughs> as, as silly as it is, it's, this is accessible for everyone. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much, Gabe. Uh, Sydney, what is your relationship with Christmas Carol? Um, I think similar to Gabe, I really didn't know too much about Christmas Carol, just bits and pieces. I think the biggest part that stood out to me was Scrooge and then Christmas past, present, future, things of that nature. And just him going through that journey, being waken up by these spirits. But I think definitely what I can say, like the difference that resonates with me versus being a child in here in Christmas Carol and now is just community is heavily influencing in this piece and how people from different walks of life different age groups different cultures whatever have you are like creating something to tell this story out of nothing and pushing this message of grief but using it in a way to move forward and not allow for it to hold you hostage. That was beautiful. Thank you. (laughs) So this is our future-themed episode about uh, the shadows that may be or or will be in time and kind of thinking about future as as it relates to understudies and swings because you are are a part of that group. Can you tell the people who who you're understudying and swinging for? So I'm understudying Fred and another kind chorus member. I'm understudying, whew, the list goes on. (laughs) Um, Christmas present, Martha and Belle. Talk to us a little bit for people who might not know what that process is like, what rehearsals are like, how you prepare, uh, what the performances may look like or may not look like. Yeah, talk a little bit about that. I think, well, I don't know, Gabe, about you. Like, this is my first time being a swing. Oh, okay. So it's definitely really interesting navigating through the space of memorizing and knowing you're blocking, especially because this show is, like, this show is full of transitions. (laughs) Like, well, uh, if nothing Uh else. One gigantic transition. One gigantic transition. For the folks at home, we're in the middle of tech right now, and we just, (laughs) we're in the midst of a transition through of moving around the various pieces of this this wonderful play that we yes, have. So. Yes. Nell, Nell said the whole show was about transformation, but I actually think it's about transition. <laughs> the whole show's about transition. Yeah, exactly. and, and we love them, but so that's, that's where uh, maybe your head is right now. Yes, exactly. That is exactly where my head is. And it's been interesting to, to know as an actor, like, your limits. Mm-hmm. And, like, how, like your capacity, just, like, how far you can be pushed to being outside of a space where, like, you're not always on stage. Like, you're not directly in connection with the director or, like, other actors on stage. You're not in connection directly to music if there's that um, in the show. But um, just how you can push yourself to be present and still feel a part of the, like, community. Because you can feel, like, a little bit of... Of an outsider, like Mm -hmm. you're not always there, you're kind of here, but you're not, and you're called upon when they may need you, but just trying to find ways where you can still feel a part of the community. But I think it just really shows like how bad a dollar signs like (sighs) we are. Like, yes, that's a perfect edit. Yeah, like, you know, know you mean, yeah, especially like coming out of the pandemic. I guess we're still in it. We're still not. I don't know. But in 2020, like, understudies were so heavily looked on. 2020, 2021, when theater was coming back, they basically kept up the industry. I mean, they had before, but I think there was a greater appreciation for them afterwards. So, like, I personally can't imagine doing a show this big without having any sort of understudy or cover swing to be included. So, for me, so this is my second official time being an understudy. I just did (laughs) Noises Off at Delaware Theater Company was swinging three roles. So for anyone who knows that show, it's it's a show. And so I'm very much 
prepared coming into this and yeah i would say the same to what you were talking about cindy just like having that you know confidence that you are able to do it but also mm-hmm. like it's a little scary and knowing that you have the community and the people around you to like push you in, into yeah. doing things that you haven't even done before but in a way that's comfortable and familiar to you because you've done the work for yourself exactly mm-hmm. and i think that's what you just said like the support the cast is great yeah. even just the ensemble of like our understudy like yeah. little family like yeah <laughs> We're just all so supportive, and I and I truly feel like I know that regardless of going on stage or being in an input rehearsal or whatever the case may be, like I know that they're not gonna let us fail. No, like, no, no. That's yeah. what I feel confident. I I don't know about other shows, uh. but for this show, <laughs> yes, with the yeah. right with yeah. the with this cast, like I definitely feel like the common goal is true, true yeah. and true. So no one is gonna want one other person to fail not hold up their end of the bargain or just feel complete within the show and i feel like when we like once we go on if and when right yeah <laughs> <laughs> i think it's, it'll be a fresh kind of air for everyone to like have a new person mm. quote unquote in yeah. the group and in the ensemble and to be able to work off of it and feel like it's fresh and new even if it's the 20th or 40th time yeah, it, yeah. i mean yeah. Something, something about the holiday shows is it's it is inevitable yeah that people get sick. Right. I mean, there's, there, it's just the nature of having that many people in a small dressing room area. Yes. The germs, you know, yeah. get around. And it, I, certainly not since COVID have we had a holiday show that didn't need swings to come on and really both, as you said, support and elevate the show. Mm-hmm. It, is, it is often a, a real jolt of great new energy and get people to, to hear what they're saying differently. Exactly. A new, so I think it's, I think it's a, a wonderful aspect of these productions, all productions that have them. You two bring a really interesting perspective, especially amongst the people that we've had as guests, just because you have had an opportunity to watch a lot of the rehearsal process, a lot of the run, a lot of that. I'm interested in, in some of the things that you've picked up. Like, what do you enjoy watching? What, what, what has really stood out to you as, like, a really exciting part of the show? Don't give too much away, but uh, I'm interested in, from your perspective, being in rehearsal. Nobody knows the storyline. <laughs> yeah, come on. What are you saying, Andrew? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in that perspective. I think going off of that, like, the story, of course they know the story. But they don't know. This That's is, what I mean, Zach. Like, <laughs> no, like, this is not Christmas Carol. Like, it's Christmas, but it doesn't, in a good way, it doesn't feel like Christmas because of the concept of ghosts and, and, and grief and, and coming to terms with living your whole life in, in a certain way and kind of being, like, woken up. But, yeah, it's, it's a darker, like, really enticing version of a holiday show, I would say, to kind of figure out a, a way to put it. But, yeah, it's, it, it makes you lean forward. It makes me lean forward, even though I know the story. And to see what those actors are going to do, because it's kind of it's a wide pool, a wide range of, of actions to try with, with all of these roles. And they do a great job of tackling all of them. And, yeah, it's just fun. It's just a fun time, I think. What about you, Fuse, Sydney? Some part of the show that you that you really enjoy watching or, or that you've seen or that was really interesting to create? I think um, just w- with not giving, like, too much away, the show not being the very traditional mm-hmm. route of how, like, people that are going to come in seeing the show are going to think about Christmas Carol and what they may be seeing. And just to see from, like, how we've talked about from the beginning with, like, the set and lighting and, like, costume, all of those different elements... I think they are going to heavily help carry mm-hmm. the show mm-hmm. in a different way that like is more I feel like more real and more authentic. And I think even just like how we go like talking about the transitions and and moving all of these things around like shifting the world like so, around us. Some might say transforming. Transforming, the world. <laughs> tra- you know? It's really exciting to see, especially in rehearsal process and then coming to work, going into tech and then seeing it when previews happen, when open happens. And just to like really see it come alive from like this blank space to something non-traditional, but still crafting like this, this world like from our imagination. It's, it's really pushing your imagination, mm-hmm. which I love. Really, re- really, really, really do love. But the, the music, the language, all of those elements are gonna like make it pop. Right, especially because you still have like the classic like Dickens language in there that everyone knows those those words, bah humbug or you just know stuff like that. But like especially with breaking the fourth wall as well to say that like we know mm-hmm. you know this story, but come with us to our version and our world of this story. Right. Yeah. There is a big invitation in this Huge. piece 
to imagine and, and to transform alongside, mm-hmm. which I really love. And I also love, I really love the music, and I feel like the music is so different and, yes. and so exciting. Zach, I, f- I feel like you and you and Mitch did just, just did a really incredible job of like breathing different life in, into carols and, and that, that I haven't heard before. So, mm-hmm. thank you, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> Jumping in on the future question again, and maybe piggybacking a bit on something you've already answered. I'm I'm curious when you think about going on in the future, what is the moment or scene or something that you're you're like I'm really excited to do that. I want to see what that's like in front of an audience. I want to see what that's like in full costume, full lights, all those kind of things. Is there, is there something in particular that you're thinking, ah, I, I really want to get a chance to do that? For me, <laughs> it's I'm, all of the, the Fred scenes are just so wholesome. But specifically, the moment in Fred's party in Act 2, I think it's during the Christmas present sequence, where Fred stops him. It's like, no, I know we're making fun of my uncle, but like, he means something to me. Like, he's family, and he's the closest thing I have right now because my mother is gone. And so I have my wife, but I want that sense of family from when I was younger. And to feel that sense of holiday spirit from when I was younger as well. So that moment when he's like, no, listen, I'm serious. And we have to toast to my uncle because I have hope that he will be someone that we all can hang out with, you know, right now. So that moment for me is something that I'm really looking forward to bringing to audiences. And no pressure, but Robbie Clater is doing a great job. I know. So, yeah. Yeah. He really so, kills it every time. That. Yeah. Yeah, it's a really gorgeous part. I The first time he did it in the room full out when we weren't just like blah, blah, blah. But mm-hmm. I was like into, I was like crying. I was yeah. tearing up because I think it is. I remember Nell saying at one point, or Ian or, or someone when we were in table work, just saying that like the Fred... Scrooge relationship mm-hmm. is so yeah. integral to the story mm-hmm. and, and yeah. it's a, re- a really beautiful mm-hmm. a really beautiful relationship yeah. is that me? I think for me it's not even a particular scene or a character that I'm swinging or understudying I think it's just really like moments where I'm on stage with everyone like as a kind chorus like when they have parts of like narration for a scene that's about to come up that I may not be in my character may not be present in I think just being on stage with everyone, whether it be in a scene, singing, just watching something happening, because tying back into something that we talked about earlier with like us bringing maybe a new type of energy to the to the story, to a scene, to the cast, just listening differently. And it's a difference like when you're in front of something hearing it, but then when you're on stage in it, hearing it, it like resonates with you differently. So I think I'm I'm, I'm excited for that part. That's good. For sure. That's good. Well, please continue the conversation we started in the comments. Be on the lookout on People's Light's social media for future episodes. If you're feeling generous, please donate to People's Light on our website at peopleslight.org slash support. We hope you come out to see Christmas Carol running at People's Light from November 15th to December 31st. You can get your tickets on the People's Light website at peopleslight.org. Awa! Awa! <laughs> <laughs>